Before the break, I told you the story of Maria Ressa, a journalist and tireless freedom fighter who's battled against threats to democracy all across the globe. Maria joins me now. She's the CEO and co-founder of the independent news organization Rappler, which is leading the fight for press freedom in the Philippines and to some degree, Philippines and to some degree around work in holding power to account as an investigative journalist earned her the Nobel Peace Prize last year. She's also the author of the powerful new memoir that is out now, How to Stand Up to a Dictator, The Fight for Our Fewer Fewer. Future. Maria, good to see you again. Thank you uh, for always being a friend of the show. I, you know, it's so powerful to have you on here because I can't convey enough to my viewers that they are watching uh, a real-life hero, a real-life fighter uh, for democracy. So uh, we appreciate the work you're doing, but you're still under threat. You are currently appealing some very, very serious charges that you face, criminal charges in the Philippines. Summarize for us what you've been convicted of and how social media has played a role in your persecution. It's the same methodology. First of all, Ali, thank you for summarizing the book so well. And it is this unseen force uh, that has helped roll back democracy all around the world. I mean, for me, it, it was in the Philippines, and this is data-based, evidence-based. We have that data. It's bottom-up exponential lies, attacks. And then that shifts reality slightly, like astroturfing. And then top-down, it came down from the president himself, in my case, President Duterte, saying the same message a narrative that was seeded journalist equals criminal and then a week after he did that all of a sudden i got the first subpoena for me and rappler we followed by 14 investigations 11 cases filed uh it started with 11 and then went to 10 and now i still have seven criminal cases i have been convicted you you pointed this out in one for I, a story a case I can't talk about because part of my the conditions for being able to travel here to the United States is is a very broad clause, a subjudice clause. So let's suffice to say there are three broad buckets that these cases fall into: tax evasion, cases that were filed about six months after the government gave my company a top corporate taxpayer award. So the past doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. five tax evasion. Charges. There are cyber libel, a cyber libel charge that is now at the Supreme Court. And then finally, uh, securities fraud, which leads right to the um, kind of how, how would you it's a global trend as well. You know, you're anti-nationalist, you're working for you're being manipulated by foreigners, all lies. Interesting, because the buckets you talk about in which uh, exploitative uh, leaders paint journalists in, in in the Philippines you are uh, criminal in 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 America under Donald Trump you are an enemy of the people in Hungary you're undermining the government you're working for the opposition or for other people this plays out in a lot of places and one of the things that you write about is that the absence of rule of law in the virtual and digital world uh, you describe as democracy's death by a thousand cuts yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, this is what we're dealing with. Uh, American tech companies, and now, of course, they're joined by companies like TikTok. But at the beginning, they they claimed that you know that the, the, they need new laws for the virtual world. But keep in mind, we are physically and virtually only one person, right? So the, it should be that the laws we deal with, rule of law in the physical world, should apply to the virtual world. But one small thing, and I think you've pointed them, this out a lot, I've seen your interviews with different people on Section 230, yep. essentially gave the technology platforms impunity, right? They stepped back. And what we have seen globally is that this impunity online leads to cascading failures Offline, impunity online leads to impunity offline. And this is also one of the failures. I've, I've castigated the social media platforms for abdicating responsibility for dealing with the public sphere. They took the gatekeeping powers away from news organizations. They abdicated responsibility. But the other part is, where are the governments that mm -hmm. are supposed to protect us? Where is yes. the better where business, are the business governments? bureau to our emotions and our minds? I'll pick you on my team 10 out of 10 times if we're fighting um, information uh, online, but neither you nor I are as powerful as either the governments or the tech companies. So who are we depending upon to take up this fight? Is it that you are hoping that in writing this book, in appearing on panels like you and I have done, uh, in appearing on TV, you'll convince enough people or you'll convince governments? How do we win this? 
it's a combination of all of the things that you just said. You know, first of all, what is the solution? And I've spent the last three years thinking about this. And since we are both in the trenches, right? You actually, what we've been doing is essentially throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what works. In the long term, it is education, doing these stories to tell people that they are being insidiously manipulated on social media, that it isn't at, that it's at three levels: psychological, personal, sociological, and groups, and then emergent human behavior that this is encouraging the worst of human. Humanity. So that is education. In the medium term, it's got to be legislation. And then in the short term, it is just us, right? We have to stop being users, stop being consumers, and start being active citizens. We have to figure out what does civic engagement mean in the age of exponential lies. And that's part of what we've tried to do in the Philippines, but there's a lot of work to be done. And as you pointed out in that wonderful you know, summary of the book, Time is running out. I mean, right now, yep. we've rolled back the number of democracies globally to 1989 levels. 60% of the world now lives under autocracy. We are electing illiberal leaders democratically, yep. same way Hitler was. And if them. these patterns don't change, the, we fall off the cliff. And it's pegged just based on the number of elections yep. to 2024. We don't have much time. Whew. Maria, thank you. Maria is the CEO and the co-founder of Rappler. She is the recipient of the 2021 UNESCO World Freedom Prize. She is the recipient of the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize. She's the author of How to Stand Up to a Dictator. Maria, the world needs you. Stay safe, stay out of jail, and stay alive. Thanks for being with us today.